if you suspect you may be dehydrated or your loved one may be dehydrated, you can always do the pinch test. And the pinch test is interesting. I've seen it before. So what you're going to do, you're going to take your hand or your loved one's hand, and you're going to pinch the skin at the back of the hand. And you just hold it for a second, pull it up and hold it, and then you release. If the skin does not return to normal, like almost immediately, it could be a sign of dehydration. And I just did it to myself, and I think I might be a little dehydrated. I'm going to go drink some water. The content available on this podcast and on lauriewilliamsseniorservices.com has been produced for educational purposes only. The contents of any episodes do not constitute medical, legal, or professional advice, do not reflect the opinions of this company, any of its parent companies or affiliates, and do not create any type of professional relationship between the audience, guest, and the host. No person listening to this podcast should act or refrain from acting on the basis of the content of a podcast without first seeking appropriate professional advice and or counseling, nor shall the information be used as a substitute for professional advice and or counseling. Lori Williams Senior Services, LLC, expressly denies any and all liability relating to any actions taken or not taken based on any or all contents of this podcast. Welcome to Aging in Style with me, Lori Williams. I'm an optimist by nature, and I believe you can follow your dreams at any age. My grandmother's journey with dementia ignited a passion in me to work with seniors. I've spent the past 13 years learning about seniors and aging. In my mid-50s, I followed my own dream and founded my company, where I use my expertise to help seniors locate housing and resources. On this podcast, we cover all aspects of aging. Join us each week to meet senior living experts and inspirational seniors who are following their dreams. The fact is, we're all aging, so why not do it in style? Hi, welcome to another episode of Aging in Style with Lori Williams. I'm so glad you've tuned in. Today, we have a great topic. We are discussing dehydration and its effect on seniors, especially in Texas where, you know, it's always hot. So this is a big issue for seniors and it's very dangerous for seniors. So we're going to talk about how it affects a senior's body, like signs to look for of dehydration, why seniors are so affected by this. And we're going to give some tips on staying hydrated and tips for caregivers as well. So first off, I did a little research leading up to this. I just wanted to kind of see what was out there about dehydration. And I found a lot. But I did find a couple of shocking statistics. One was from a UCLA study, and they said 40% of seniors may be chronically underhydrated. And also, adults age 65 and up have the highest hospital admission rates for dehydration. That's scary. And dehydration can lead to UTIs, urinary tract infections, falls, kidney stones, and more. And back to the UTIs, If you're not around a senior, I didn't know this until I started working with seniors, but a UTI is vastly different in the way it affects a 25-year-old versus how it's going to affect an 85-year-old. So let's kind of jump in and talk about why we are more susceptible to dehydration as we age. So, of course, our bodies are aging. Duh. <laughs> so some some things are going to happen. Uh, one thing is we have a decreased sense of thirst as we get older. So older people just don't feel thirsty like you do when you're younger. Add into that medications. Many seniors are on medications and those medications can actually lead to dehydration. You also have less efficient kidney function as you age. And Let's just add one more thing, mobility issues. So it takes a lot of effort for someone who uses a walker to get around. So say your grandma has a walker, she's in her family room, she's watching TV and she wants to get up and go get some water. Well, it's going to take a lot more effort for her to get her walker, get up, get to the kitchen, get her glass of water, get back to her couch and to watch TV with her glass of water, then, you know, for you, you would just jump up and run in and get your water. So, so the mobility issues, they may think, you know what, that's a lot of work. Do I really, I'm not really even that thirsty. Forget it. You know, I can definitely see how that happens. And the other side is it concerns about incontinence. So a lot of seniors are worried that they're going to have an accident. So they may limit their fluids to prevent that. So, you know, they're, they're not going to the bathroom as often, but then their body is becoming dehydrated. And then the other 
thing that we have to look at is cognitive impairment. So people with dementia, they, you know, or have all of these things, plus they may actually forget to drink. So lots of factors at play here. So let's talk about the signs of dehydration. So kind of like the mildest, I guess, would be like the first sign you might have is a headache. So, but you continue to dehydrate your body. And these are some other things that may happen. Muscle cramps, dizziness, and dizziness could lead to those falls. Less frequent urination, dark colored urine. Our urine is supposed to be a pale yellow if we are properly hydrated. Fatigue, dry skin or loss of elasticity elasticity, it's a hard word to say, confusion, rapid breathing and heartbeat, and low blood pressure. And we don't want any of those. If you suspect you may be dehydrated or your loved one may be dehydrated, you can always do the pinch test. And the pinch test is interesting. I've seen it before. So what you're going to do, you're going to take your hand or your loved one's hand, and you're going to pinch the skin at the back of the hand. And you just hold it for a second, pull it up and hold it, and then you release. If the skin does not return to normal, like almost immediately, it could be a sign of dehydration. And I just did it to myself, and I think I might be a little dehydrated. I'm gonna go drink some water. Um, so that is a good one to try is the pinch test. So let's keep hydrated. So what are some great tips to stay hydrated? I have them for you today. So of course, number one, drink up. And water is best. If you don't like water, you can always add fruit or flavoring to water. You could throw in lemon, lime, orange slices, strawberries. If you ever go to a spa and they have that spa water where they put like cucumber and strawberries and all kinds of stuff in it. I love that. So make some spa water. Coffee, tea, and fruit juice all contain water. Maybe like a savory drink or, or like a soup, like a broth, chicken, beef, or vegetable broth. Consume foods with high water content. Did you know? I bet you didn't. But the water content of a cucumber is 96%. I just learned that. Other good options might include tomatoes, watermelon, bell pepper, grapes, cantaloupe, blueberries, and apples. You could also have a popsicle. Give them a popsicle. Make a popsicle. You can buy, there's like the ones with sugar and stuff at the store, but there's also some, you know, some more healthier options too for popsicles. Smoothies. When you're making a smoothie, add a bunch of these high water content fruits and vegetables. I personally love smoothies and I throw everything into them. I mean, even spinach and kale and all kinds of crazy things. And you really don't taste it, or at least I don't. Maybe a milkshake. You know, maybe your grandpa loves a chocolate milkshake from Sonic. Go get him a milkshake. Just keep that man hydrated. <laughs> so another great tip is to always keep a glass of water close by. You can maybe purchase a special, like one of those insulated mugs or a cup with a straw. I personally have, it's sort of like a Yeti, Yeti type mug, and my niece gave it to me. It's my favorite color, which is sort of like a aqua blue, and Minnie Mouse is on it, and my name, so it makes me happy. Y'all know I love Disney, so I just look at this cup, and I refill it all day long. Bring water with you when you go out for a walk or on an outing. If I'm going to go run errands, I mean, and if it's, you know, 98, 100 degrees here in Texas, I always grab a bottle of water to take with me. So say you're a caregiver. Let's talk about some caregiver tips. How can you help keep your senior loved one, keep them hydrated? So one, and I thought this was such a good tip and I hadn't thought about this, have a clear mug for them to track how much liquid they've consumed. So if you have a clear mug, you can see, oh, they they drank half their water or you can see, oh, they've only had a sip. I need to make sure they're drinking more. Temperature preference is also huge. Not all seniors like cold water. I I mean, I don't like ice in my water, so I don't know, that might be kind of weird, but some people just like it room temperature and no ice. So you need to know what their preference is, because if they don't like ice cold water, that may be why they're not drinking it. Have straws available. That may be easier for them to use offer those high hydration snacks that we talked about, the fruits and vegetables, jello cups, applesauce, sherbet or popsicles. Another thing to be aware of if your senior loved one that you're caring for, maybe they have low vision, it, they may do better if you got them a cup or glass that's opaque or maybe even like a really brightly colored cup so they can see it. If you have a senior loved one 
who is just very resistant to drinking water, they may enjoy making it about the experience. And I thought this was a really fun tip because I need to let my daughter know I'm probably going to be that high maintenance resistant senior. So you can put their water juice or whatever, put it in a pretty glass and put a garnish, maybe some lemon, make it just kind of an experience. I think that would be cool. Or I was thinking about this. My kids have these ice cubes that they're battery operated (laughs) and they, they do all different colors. That might be kind of fun too. Always try that. Specialized drinkware. So some seniors, they may need special cups. Maybe they have swallowing difficulties or tremors from Parkinson's or arthritis where they can't really hold a cup. Maybe it needs two handles on it or just some muscle weakness. There are cups out there. I mean, there's every kind of cup you can imagine. You just have to Google. Do a Google search for cups for seniors with mobility issues. I'm telling y'all, I saw every kind of cup you can imagine. There were the two-handle cups, the no-spill lid, the built-in straws, even some that had like a nose cut out if you had neck injuries and had issues with drinking. So there, there's something for everyone out there, I promise. Let's talk a little bit about dehydration and if you're caring for someone who has dementia, it's going to be a little bit different. So when they have dementia, they do forget to drink enough water. They also, of course, to go with that, that lost sense of thirst, but they may also forget where to find water. I mean, even if it's sitting right next to them, they may just completely forget that that is a cup of water and I'm supposed to drink it. They may have swallowing difficulties. So sometimes um, they have to have thickening agents added to it, to their water so that they can swallow. So it's just a whole host of other issues that come into play with seniors. I think this is the coolest thing. They're called jelly drops. And I had read about this gentleman, I guess a couple of years ago. So he's this young guy in England. His name is Lewis Hornby. And his grandma, Pat, had dementia and she had been in the hospital for dehydration. And so he just, you know, just knew that there was another, a better way to help her get hydrated. So he It's a really kind of interesting story Like he went into, I guess, like a memory care and he kind of studied how things were done and then he came up with this idea. So what these jelly drops are, they're brightly colored bite sized balls of liquid. So they're 95 percent water and they have some kind of like a gelling agent and electrolytes in them to help with hydration. And they're sweet, which a lot of times seniors, especially with dementia, they do like sweets. And so, but they're sugar free and they're vegan. They're like naturally flavored. They're strawberry, raspberry, uh, I think orange, lemon, lime. There was one other. So those jelly drops, like he made them and gave them to his grandmother. And I think she ate like seven, like just sat there and ate seven of them. So that, I mean, this is a game changer. And so they're available in England and I guess other areas in Europe. But I went on their website and they are coming to the US end of summer 2021. So be on the lookout for jelly drops. So I just think that's a really interesting, cool invention and just kind of a fun story too. So I hope that this episode today will help you come up with ideas or actually just to be aware that dehydration is such an issue for our senior population. But I also hope that it'll help you with tips that you can share with family members and um, with caregivers. So if you have any questions or you want to go and see, you know, look for a little more information, please visit my website, which is lauriwilliams-seniorservices.com. You can always contact me through the website too. And I'm so thankful that you joined us today and we'll see you next week. Thanks. Bye-bye. 